Tag Tuesday, I stole this tag shamelessly. This tag is built for me. The negative opinions, the cynicism, the sarcasm. I was giddy when I first saw it popping up on different booktubers channels. And so I took it not being tagged, not even being mentioned. I don't care. <laughs> I can't wait to give the answers to the anti-TBR tag. Hi Booktube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March. I am so giddy, as you saw in the intro, this is the anti-TBR tag for Tag Tuesday. I stole it from Ben's channel, Doom Antidote, and the original tag was from Nicole and her books, and I will link everybody's channels below. Uh, I'm gonna get going, because I, I, I could not wait to film this video. I'm shameful, I know. Shameless, shameful, it's all good. Okay. Prompt number one from my laptop over on my right. A popular book everyone loves that you have no interest in reading. Um, I have a wicked big problem with uh, Frederick Bachman. I read Bear Town and ripped it apart for so many different reasons. But Anxious People is his newest and it seems like everybody is on the bandwagon on the Frederick Bachman train. I can't stand him and his writing. Uh, I read a couple of his books. It's He's just not for me, and I have absolutely no interest in anxious people. Um, I'm anxious enough. I don't want to <laughs> read a fictional account of his theme and, and tone of writing, so whatever. The other one is a book I was hoping to read initially before it came out, but at this point I have no intu interest, and it's uh, Luster by Raven Leilani. Um, I'm not, I think it's the millennial angst kind of a thing, and I'm just simply too old. I'm too old. I just have no energy for it. So I'm going to bypass that one. Thank you very much. Number two, a classic book or author you don't have an interest in reading. Um, Brian, don't fight me on this, but I can't even stomach the thought of reading anything by Ernest Hemingway. Um, misogyny, sexism, alcoholism... Um, just a big giant jerk to begin with. I have absolutely no interest. And I, I, I just have so many problems with how elevated he is. Maybe he's a genius. I don't know. Maybe his writing is spectacular. I don't know. I don't care because I don't want to pick up any of his books. Number three, an author whose books you have no interest in reading. Um, I have a couple that will be going into a massive unhaul I'm planning soon. Uh, one of them is one of the oldest books on my shelves. It's Jonathan Franzen's The Corrections. Again, big, big giant ass of a person, and I have no interest in picking this book up except to display it right now as I'm doing. But this will end up in a big giant unhaul. Um, no interest, and I don't want to read anything by this particular author. The other one is uh, A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. I'm not into the violence, the bro violence, the, the man violence, the toxic masculinity, whatever you want to call it. Those are going into the unhaul pile, donate pile. Uh, prompt 3.2, <laughs> a problematic author whose books you have no interest in reading. You can combine questions 3 and 3.2, or you can answer them separately if you have an answer for both. Um, Vladimir, Vladimir Nabokov, uh, Lolita. I, uh, I can't bring myself to read that book and I can't bring myself to pick it up. And I, I get so skeeved out when I see copies of that book in this, in the edition where they have, um, the young girl's legs on the cover. It's, I can't, I can't stomach it. I don't want to read it. I already know what the story is about. Um, the perspective is interesting to me, but I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> prompt number four, and I'm not really that delicate, so. Prompt number four, an author you have read a couple of books from and have decided their books are not for you. I really, really, really wanted to like Allie Smith and her seasonal quartet, and I read Autumn, and I actually enjoyed it. And then I got halfway through winter and I realized I don't think this author is for me. And I also read her short story collection, Public Library. Um, uh, I read half of it. I felt the same way. I said, you know what? I, I'm going to just DNF this because this, she's, her writing is simply not, it does, I don't jive with that writing. 
And I picked it up like a month or so later and I did finish the collection and gave it a three, I think. Um, but I, her style is not, does not attract me. And I tried, I really did. <laughs> I think she's beloved on booktube. Uh, and I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. Everybody's different. Everybody likes what they like. Um, the other one uh, is not a book, but it is John Cheever's stories. I read and listened to several of them this year. And just like, what's the attraction? Ah, no. I think I have an issue with alcoholic men. But i just not interested. And I think uh, many of his themes are upper crust, upper class suburbia, alcohol, partying, class issues, relationship, marital issues. Yeah, I'm all set. That Unhaul. Unhaul. Let's see. Prompt number five. A genre you have no interest in or a genre you, you tried and couldn't get into. I've never, um, back in my day, back in the olden days, uh, when I was in middle school, high school, I started, I read a couple of Stephen King's. Uh, I, don't like him anymore, but I think his older stuff is far better than his newer stuff. Um, I read like the Amityville horror, still have nightmares. Uh, I read, you know, like some thrillers. I read um, Helter Skelter, which was one of the early true crime books. And I'm just not into horror. Uh, I got out of that, that phase very quickly. I hate horror movies. I don't like being scared. There's plenty of real life stuff to be scared about. And the other genre is poetry. I read Gwendolyn Brooks's Selected Poems early this year. I think, uh, I don't remember. It doesn't matter. But it wasn't that long ago that I read this collection. And I felt like an idiot because I, do, I just didn't understand a lot of it. Her writing is gorgeous. But I just didn't get it. And I some of them I did. <laughs> Does that make a difference? I, I just feel stupid. And I'm not, I know I'm not a stupid person, but I, I, I'm I, not that interested in poetry. Um, I've read some Mary Oliver collections and I like her poetry. For me, it's, it's easier to get into. She writes a lot about nature and the natural world and beautiful stuff, but I'm, I'm not a poetry fan. When a poet writes a novel, I absolutely love it. And I think it's basically just the mastery of language that I admire in that type of a book. Uh, let's see, prompt number six, a book you have bought what will, but will never read. This is an interesting one because this also has to do with an, uh, yet another problematic author. Um, I've had this book, again, one of the oldest on my personal shelves, Cormac McCarthy's No Country for Old Men. This is a former library copy. Um, I don't remember how long I, a long ago I acquired this. I think it was a Christmas gift from my husband many, many, many years ago. But I'm just not interested anymore because of the violence and, you know, whatever. It's Cormac McCarthy, who is uh, highly problematic for me. Just the violence, the misogyny, the lack of female representation, but also because he's just a shithead of a person. Um, to, you know, abandoning his family, abandoning his children, using his wife at the time so he could get established as an author and then dumping the family once he was rich. Um, I think I've seen partial interviews with him and he's just a big giant jerk. But along with that book, I have four others of his books, which I've acquired over the years a long time ago. I read The Road. Uh, not this cover, but it's got um, Vigo Mortensen on the cover. Hello. So I have read The Road and it was crazy disturbing, but I did like that book. I want to read Blood Meridian because I've heard that this is basically a masterpiece. Um, so it's I'm curious. I, I may read this book and decide if I'm done with McCarthy or not. And I've had these books forever. All the Pretty Horses and The Crossing, which I think is the third in this particular trilogy. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get to these. I don't know if I want to read anything by McCarthy. He, he's an awful person. <laughs> that And that, that matters to me. And uh, Brian from Bookish and I had a chat in some comments about separating the art from the artist. 
I find that very difficult because there are some highly problematic authors who have written brilliant books. I don't think I am emotionally able to separate that for myself and enjoy that reading experience. So I tend to avoid the problematics. That could be a good name for a band. Okay, prompt number seven, a series you have no interest in reading or a series you started and have DNF'd. I have no interest in reading Brandon Sanderson's series. Uh, how many of them are there? What has he got, like 412 books out there? Um, he's beloved by many, especially fantasy science fiction fans. I, I've i seen him all over BookTube. I don't really care. And I believe everybody. I believe he's great and they love his books. And um, okay, not for me. <laughs> the other one is laughable, but... Many years ago, I read Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, that was so stupid and gross. And um, I am not new to the erotica genre. And that was just stupid. And I actually read it as a hate read to, to kind of write a presentation on it that I delivered many years ago. And it was, it was stupid. It was poorly written. It was dumb. It was stupid erotica. And no interest whatsoever in continuing on the series or the movie. That said, every single used bookstore I go to has multiple copies of that book. I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know if people are dying to get rid of it and throw them away. Or if so many people have owned them and re read them that they're all set and they've donated. I don't know. But <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's so stupid. And prompt number eight. Eight, a new release you have no interest in reading. Um, I don't really have an interest in Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. He's on Book of the Month Club, and I've seen that book everywhere on people's channels. Um, I don't care. It's, I'm all set. And it's funny because every reader is so different, and the older I get, the more I realize which books I'm going to love before I pick them up or which books are my type of book. Uh, which types of stories or formats or tones or voices that I really love. And so it's a lot easier now these days to discern, do I even bother picking up that new release? Uh, no, probably not. And I, I have no idea if this is a well-written book or not. It could be fantastic. I just no interest. And another one is Piranesi by um, Susanna Clark. Susanna Clark wrote... Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, which I DNF'd after pages, uh, 300 pages. This is a brick. Uh, actually, this is a cinder block of a book. <laughs> I, this was a buddy read with Freddie from um, Sluggish Reader. And I gave up at 300 pages before he did. He wanted to continue and he ended up giving it up as well. It's just, there's no, there's no cohesive storyline. And at 300 pages, I'm like, when's something going to happen? Um, I didn't like the relationship between the two main characters. It was it was too weird and in, in, not connected and, and didn't really make sense. And so I don't really have any interest in reading Piranesi. And I've heard other reviewers and booktubers say, again, nothing happens in this book. <laughs> okay. And I honestly think that she's kind of relying on the kind of the cult following of Jonathan Strange, but yep, no interest. Um, I have a I have an ambivalent relationship with new releases anyway. If you've watched my channel, I've said that several times. Um, so yeah, I, I tend to avoid super hype books until after they've come out. Maybe a year later, I'll pick one up if it's still interesting to me. I have better luck when I do it that way. So... Oh, I love, <laughs> I love talking about, I love talking about things I think are stupid or poorly done or bad. What does that say about me? Am I cruel, mean, contrary? Yeah, I'm contrary for sure. You know, as a book lover and a, and a reader and an art appreciator, I'm not here to bash any person who's created a, a novel or a piece of literature or nonfiction. That's not why I'm here. Um, but, but I do have some very strong opinions and it was such a, <laughs> I, I feel so silly. It was such a great opportunity to tell you what I hate. So that's it. I'm done. 
Um, I could ha I could do this tag every week for ne all of next year if I felt like it, but I won't subject you all to that. Um, do I want to tag anybody? Sure. Let's see. Who can I tag that will um, let us know what they hate? I'm going to do this in an opposite way. I'm going to tag some booktubers who have a really down-to-earth positive attitude and see what they come up with. I'm tagging Karen Evans. I'm tagging you. I'm also tagging Gemma from Read a Book Gem. I'm going to tag um, Freddie from Sluggish Reader because I mentioned him already. And who else? There's a couple of booktubers that I was going to tag, but I think they've already done it. And good gosh. Um, Margaret Pennard. I'll tag you. And who else could I tag? I could tag Sean, but I'm not gonna because he this would be too easy for him. And do 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 do. I think that's about it. That's four. Um, thanks for watching, you guys. Uh, write a comment down below about any of your opinions on any of the prompts, any of my answers, any of the books I showed you. Let me know if I should change my mind. I don't. I'm not sure you're gonna be able to do that. I'm pretty decisive. But fight me if you want. And subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.